Hi guys, thanks for joining me for another Affinity Designer tutorial. Today I'm going to be going over how to use the constraints panel right after this. Okay, so right now I have the constraints panel right here, and to get that panel, I'll come up here to view, and then come down here to Studio and then click on constraints and it will pop up. So the constraints panel is just like a square, a big square and then a smaller square and a few lines here and there drawing and I'm going to explain what those lines mean and what these circles down here mean and everything. Um, so I've sort of created what this looks like on here. This is sort of like a diagram of what your constraints might look like so I decided just to go along with that and create uh, something an example just like this and then later in the tutorial I'll go on and show you a different example in this and if you guys want to download these two examples um, just go ahead and get in a uh, look in the description and there should be a download link and it'll be a folder and you can open and um, open this or you can open that or you can open both and so um, so here we have a parent child relationship so um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do that just in case you don't know I'm gonna redo this one and I draw a square and then I'm going to draw a another square, another square. And I'm going to stick them both in the middle of the page. Using the align buttons right up at the top. Okay, so I have these two squares. I'm going to make the smaller one the blue color okay so we have these two squares and to make a child parent relationship it depends on what which square you want to be parent and which square you want to be child if you want the gray to be parent, which I do, then go ahead and drag the blue squared and make it sort of go inside the um, the gray one. And it will pop up with a little green thing that will show that um, it is going inside it. So I'm going to name this parent so you guys can see. Parent and open the layer and name this child so this is the parent child relationship so um, what you do is uh, for constraints you change the child not the parent so we're going to click on child and I'm going to tell you what these constraints mean over here so these arrows are for uh, resizing and so whenever you resize the parent at this point in time it will just um, it will just resize and squish this uh, child object and if we want the child object to stay the same let's say if it's like a logo or something and we don't want it to be like really look bad or something that's what constraints is for if you don't really want to make your logo look squished and stuff so click on uh, child object again and to if you un if you click these arrows again it will de-highlight them and then if you click on the parent object and resize it again it will basically just not resize the child object at all um, which is nice in some different cir circumstances so um, and then you can also um, anchor it to the top, the bottom, 
this both or both of the sides if you want and if you anchor at the bottom and the top at the same time or both of the sides at the same time it will show that this thing is forced so it will be forced to resize it and uh, make it squished and stuff so that's what those things are anchors on the edges then down here there's two little circles one is called min fit and one is called max fit so the min fit is on the left the max fit is on the right to use these you have to select these arrows and make sure they're selected then click on one of the min fit and make sure you're selected on the child rectangle that can be a problem if you're selected on the parent rectangle so now select on the parent rectangle and resize it and it will go smaller so what the min fit does it takes the smallest side of the parent object and makes it the what makes it the size of the child object per ratio and it that means it never ever goes out of out of the the parent object so I think that's all for this example now I'm going to go into the website example and this is just like a very quick example I'm not really gonna go into very much detail of how I did this and stuff but and also if you want to download this just look in the description so what I have here is an uh, just a artboard with a website design on it that I just created like a few weeks ago and then I have uh, another artboard that is iPhone 6 size and the way to do that is to come up here to document come down here and click on iPhone 6 then click insert artboard so that's how I did that so um, I've already uh, pre-done this like pre-done all the constraints and everything and so I'm going to go ahead and come back once I'm done putting it on the iPhone 6 artboard and so we're going to do that uh, and I'll be right back okay so I'm all done uh, putting it on to this new uh, to the iPhone 6 I also made these icons over here are like way bigger because um, if you think about it the iPhone 6 screen is probably not that small and if you really want to stress your points or your icon points then then you're gonna have to make it really um, stand out and big so I went ahead and did that uh, once you download this you can um, mess around with it however you want and sort of see how I, how I put the constraints on and everything um, also I'd like to tell you that this quote is just something I made up and Mike Page is just a random name I came up with it's not anybody in particular so you don't need to go and search up Mike Page and stuff and quotes and stuff because I don't even know if there is a Mike Page out there or anything but just uh, just a side note if you if this tutorial was helpful uh, please give me a like and if you want more affinity designer tutorials like this um, please subscribe and if you have like a specific tutorial that you want me to do um, just please comment in the area below and I'll be able to get that for you and, um, thanks so much for watching this video